Welcome everybody. Right now, I'm going to list my favorite top 25 shooter games on console from 1999 to the first half of 2020. This has been one of the videos I've always wanted to do, and over the past few weeks, I finally decided to put it all together. But before we get started, here are some things that you all need to know. Number one, this is completely my personal favorite list of games. So what does that mean? Well, chances are, my list is not going to be the same as yours. If you want to make your own video telling the world what shooter games you thought were the best, go right on ahead and do so. Not every game on this list will please everybody, nor do I care about that. Number two, I am going to stick to mainly console games, but I am going to include two games that are well known for the PC version, one of which does have a console version. Other than that, the rest are going to be console games. And keep in mind, there was a lot of different games to go through. Number three, I am going to judge these games mainly off of a few things. Did it do well in its era? Was the story awesome, or was it the wow factor from the multiplayer that made it better than almost anything else? And of course, how much fun was it to play back in the day? The fun factor is the most important thing to me. If I did well on it, chances are it made the list. And finally, the last thing I've got to mention, enjoy the damn video. Here we go. I think any true Medal of Honor fan has to have this game on their list somewhere. And this is where it lands for me. At number 25, Medal of Honor European Assault. This game is very underrated in the Medal of Honor series. It had some great gameplay. And it had some awesome music in it. Released in the year 2005, it was one of the best games for that year. I do have to admit, I had Medal of Honor Underground here at first. But I couldn't keep this game off the list. So Underground would be number 26. It just missed out. I'll say a few things about that game too. It was the second Medal of Honor game to be released. Some may say Frontline was better than both of these games. But Frontline was also more popular because it was available on four different systems. Meanwhile, hardly anybody remembers Underground because it was just on the PS1 and the Game Boy Advance. And European Assault was only on three different systems. Overall, these games were both more fun to play, and European Assault is a good game to start off this list at number 25. At number 24, Army Men 3D. Released in March of 1999, this game was hella hard. I remember it being extremely challenging on PS1, but it was still a nice game to play. And here's a fun fact for you. This series, I believe they made 23 different games. 18 of those were released between 1999 and 2002, which is flat out insane to do in a four year span. But this is where I rank this game. I could have easily went with a couple of different games from this series, but I think this game has a bit of an edge to it. Moving on to number 23, Battlefield 4. Released in 2013, Having this game at number 23 probably surprises some people, but the fact of the matter is, it's a top 25 game, but there are a few reasons why it got placed here. Reason number one, the launch of this game was absolutely terrible, guys. I still can't get past that, and I have seen some rough game launches, but this might have been the worst. It got to the point where EA... EA made DICE step in and said, you guys are not working on anything else until you fix this game. <laughs> That's pretty bad if EA is forcing people to do their actual job for once. As far as the game now, it's somewhat fun to play, but from a gameplay perspective for me, and this leads to my second reason why I can't place it any higher on here, I just could not deal with the amount of vehicles 
Playing as infantry was not fun, especially on the larger game modes. This game was the definition of a vehicle warfare game. And I don't spam vehicles 24-7 and never will on any game. So with all that in mind, it barely made the top 25. But I will say, when I first got my Xbox One, it was the second game I got for it. Number 22. The original Star Wars Battlefront game from 2004. If you have been to this channel before, chances are you know that I love the older Star Wars films, the Star Wars games, and especially the first three Star Wars Battlefront games. I am putting this game at number 22 because it was one of my favorite games to play when I was a kid. I can still go back to it and have a good time playing it, and it brings back a lot of good memories. The shooting aspect was a bit rough, but hey, even a game from 2004 still beats the clunky shooting with PUBG on console. I'm just saying, a game from 04 did a way better job compared to a game from 2017 from a shooting aspect on console. That says a lot right there. And for a game made in the early 2000s, it was fantastic. So it gets the number 22 spot. Going forward to number 21, the first Red Faction game. Year? 2001. Let me just say, this game is so unknown to most people, I would be willing to bet 99% of the people that are watching this video have not played it. The Red Faction series has always been known for the multiplayer. If you can look past the rough graphics like I can, it's a very enjoyable game to play. I just wish this game would have made it to Xbox. Sadly, it never did. The campaign was bad, but on the multiplayer, it had the best destroyable environment for a game at this time period on the PlayStation 1. At number 20, Battlefield 1 from 2016. For me, as the infantry guy, I am very comfortable with it. When it comes to the amount of explosive plays I can generate on the ground in this game, it's ridiculous. I'm not a stats guy at all, but it is nice knowing I'm one of the highest rated players on the game in terms of capping the flag and playing the objective. BF1, it was hated by most of the community because it was historically inaccurate, and it was rough at times because of things in the game like dynamite, the OP shotguns and LMGs, the artillery truck, the dreadnought, and the planes were overpowered for attacking infantry. All of that didn't take any skill at all and was annoying to most people, but the limit on the total number of vehicles on BF1 I thought was a little more fair and I know some of the maps weren't the best on BF1 either but I love the pure madness that one infantry player can create on this game that's why I have it here at number 20 because at times it was beyond enjoyable when things were running good and I still play it every once in a while because it is better than most battlefield games number 19 another underrated game red faction 2 year 2002. It may have not had the better destroyable environment compared to Red Faction 1, but Red Faction 2, it's my favorite game from the series. The campaign wasn't the best, but it was better than Red Faction 1's campaign. The multiplayer was slightly better as well. This game had about 50 maps to choose from on Xbox, which is unheard of. But both games did so much for first-person shooter games to the point that some other franchises seem like they flat out stole the concept years later from these two games. So for what they both did at such an early era, and because of how epic and insane the local custom multiplayer matches were, I had to put both of these games in the top 25 for those reasons. At 18, Battlefield 3. This game was released in 2011. I bet some people were wondering, was I going to put this game ahead of Battlefield 4, its rival game? And here is your answer. For me, I thought this game was better all the way around. The campaign to me, BF3 has the best campaign in the series. Battlefield has also always been known for the multiplayer, just like Red Faction was. And I was not disappointed at all with this multiplayer. I really enjoyed it. I just wish I could have spent a little bit more time on it back then. So it gets the number 18 spot. Ask yourself this. 
what could possibly be better than BF1, BF3, and BF4 from the Battlefield series? Bad Company 2, baby. Year released, 2010. And do I really even need to offer an explanation to why this game is better than those? I didn't think so. But I will say a few things just because. First, it's so much fun to play. But I wish more people played it. It seemed like it just died off when it came to the player base, like every other Battlefield game has over time. But damn, player-wise, it's clinging just barely now, just like a stripper's panties. But it's a joy to go back and play when you can get a somewhat full match going. Very few games can put a smile on my face just by talking about it. This game, what can I say? It feels just like Christmas all over again. Moving on to a top game that everybody should know about, Black. Year released, 2005. Black was just a badass game to play. You can't sum it up any better than that. Between myself and everybody I know that's ever played it, we all loved it. So it gets placed here for me at number 16. Number 15, here we go. Let's start mentioning some Call of Duty games. Call of Duty Finest Hour. Year, 2004. The history of this series is legendary. Some may say it really began with Call of Duty 4, but the series started with this game for console. I remember playing this with my dad as a kid, and it had a lot of good moments behind it. You can't possibly not have this game on the list if you are an original Call of Duty player. This game just so happens to be one of those games that deserve a little bit more recognition. At number 14, Call of Duty 2, specifically the Big Red one. Year, 2005. It had one of the best campaigns ever. It might have been the best campaign at the time, and it actually felt like you were a character in the game. I absolutely loved that feeling it gave you. To date, it's still up there in the top five in the Call of Duty franchise for campaigns for me. And Call of Duty has had some damn good ones. From 03 to 09 in 2011, when it comes to the storyline, let me tell you, so, if this game cracks the top 5 for the story in COD, that should tell you something right there. Speaking of good storylines, MW3 at number 13 makes perfect sense for me. Great campaign, the multiplayer wasn't bad. I wish there wasn't so many cheaters on it, and I wish I could move around on it without people hearing me 24-7. But all in all, it was a great game to play. I really liked the story. When I played the first mission for the first time in 2011, it blew my mind, and that ending was awesome. My favorite gun in the multiplayer was the PP90M1 with extended mags and rapid fire attachments. That was a kick-ass gun to use back in the day. So MW3 gets the number 13 spot. On to number 12, and this game means a lot to me with how many years I played and streamed it. It was also the first game I got for my Xbox One. Star Wars Battlefront 3, year released, 2015. I told a few people where I was going to put this on the list before I uploaded and completed this video, and they couldn't believe where I was putting this one. They could not believe I did not have this in my top 10 with how good I was at this game. And well, there was a lot of bullshit and negativity on here. And if I, of all people, if all the players out there am willing to come out and say that, you know I'm speaking the truth. I stepped away from it seven months ago for several reasons. You might wonder, with all the negativity surrounding this game, why even have it listed here at number 12? Because it was more fun than almost every other game on the planet for me at one point in time. I loved the non-stop action that this game delivered. When the game mode Droid Run was in its original version, you could not get me off of this game. Later on, EA and DICE ruined that game mode, which did not sit well with me, along with other changes that were 100% not necessary at all. That includes nerfing the TL-50 Heavy Repeater, which is one of my favorite weapons ever across all video games. They obviously 
should have focused on fixing the glitches and addressing the problems in the game instead of doing the stupid things I just mentioned. They could have also nerfed the things that needed to be nerfed instead, which would have made it way more fun to play. But guess what? All of that did not happen while they messed it up even more themselves. However, and, and let me get to the positive side here, Walker Assault and the Scarif DLC were awesome. And really, any of the DLC modes were fun to play. I would go as far as saying the entire DLC is one of the best DLCs to ever be released for a video game. And I know some people consider me to be the best player to ever play the game, but I really could care less about that. As I look back at it now, that shit never paid my bills, and I never got the views that I deserved on the game either. But when I was playing it every other day, it felt pretty good to use one of the weakest guns on there and still kick everybody's ass. I really enjoyed that part of the game, trust me. And when you're dropping over 100 as infantry to over 200 kills with a hero, legitimately with a controller, without aim assist, you would love the game too for a while when you are flat out dominating the shit out of people every single match. But it does belong here at number 12. And despite some of the letdowns and negative bullshit along the way, I still had plenty of good times on this game. And it will forever be a part of me. Just outside of the top 10, Call of Duty Black Ops. Year 2010. Good story, great multiplayer. Slightly better than MW3's multiplayer in my opinion, which is why I have it listed here ahead of MW3 because the multiplayer does matter a bit more. I just wish I could play this game. I still cannot find any other players on Xbox One, which is sad, but I will remember the fun times on here, that's for sure. And I loved the fact that this game didn't have the OP sniper rifles. And there isn't many shooter games that you can say that about, which made it so much fun for the AR player which is the main reason why I have it here at number 11. And here we go, we are in the top 10. And I can't think of any other game better to start it off with than the original Medal of Honor. Year 1999. Only two games on here have been listed before the year 2000. And let me tell you, I mentioned I played Call of Duty with my dad when it first came out. Well, guess what? I played Medal of Honor with my mom. The whole family really got into shooter games back then. We all loved Medal of Honor when it came out in 99. It's a real shame that EA is the filthy devil we all know they are. And they ended up getting rid of this great series for far too long already. But still, this game, it has just as much history as Call of Duty Finest Hour has. If not more. When you played it back then, it felt like you played a real shooter game for the very first time, as if one was never created before. That's what it felt like. If you didn't experience this game back then when it first came out, you missed out big time. Let's go ahead and jump to number 9. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Year released, 2007. This game gets the 9 spot because it had arguably the best campaign in the series. And it made the franchise a franchise. The multiplayer was cool, but it had a lot of campers and a lot of problems at first. It did get remastered later on, but it didn't feel the same to me. Especially when they added 15 new weapons and plenty of horrible game modes that were all not a part of the original game. But all in all, the original game deserves to make it this far for me. In 2007, it was one of the best games ever at that time. And many people, including myself, will always remember this one.
At number 8, I have Halo 3. And at number 7, I have Halo 2. Halo was the main reason why I continued to go with Xbox over PlayStation all those years ago. And I mean, come on, it's the Master Chief. You can't have Master Chief outside of the top 10. He might shoot you and bunny hop over your body and then throw you in the back of a warthog. These two games, believe it or not, should have been one game. The people behind the scenes that were creating the story wanted this to be one. One game. Imagine if that actually happened. The frenzy was crazy for Halo 3 in 2007. Only one other game have I seen the stores packed to capacity and out to the parking lot on the night that a game was supposed to be dropped. But in all honesty, we all know Halo 2 from 2004 was mainly responsible for all that hype in the beginning for Halo 3, which is why I have Halo 2 one spot ahead at number 7. When I think of Halo, I think of Halo 2 in that multiplayer, and then Halo 3. I know most people have that backwards, or they would put Halo Reach in the conversation, but Halo was built on these two games. That's why they get the number 7 and 8 spots. Number 6, Metal Honor, Rising Sun. It was released in 2003. I mentioned my mom and I would play Metal of Honor together when I was a kid, and I am not ashamed to say that my mom would whoop my ass on this game. Despite that, this is my favorite Metal of Honor game. It gets ranked at number 1 in the series for me, and at number 6 overall on this list. I do have to say though, it was very difficult to choose between this game and the original Medal of Honor. It says a lot about this overall underrated series if two of them made it to the top 10. But Rising Sun, I will always cherish this game. It was epic at the time. I wish I could have put this in the top 5, I really do. But unfortunately there can only be 5 in the top 5. So at the top five, it has to be a special game to make it this far. And here we are. The game that deserves to be here at this spot at number five is Battlefield 1942. Year released, 2002. I know this is a PC game, but I can't make a list of good shooter games without this game being on it. This game was supposed to have a Xbox version at one point, but was never released. PlayStation was never an option for this game for whatever reason, but as far as the scheduled Xbox version, many people did not know about that. It was cancelled about two years later, so I had to play it on PC, and it's one of the very few PC games I ever got into. It's by far the best Battlefield game, and the series has never felt the same to me since then. It won 2002 Game of the Year. It's a classic game that has withstood the test of time. It's one of the more basic, straightforward shooter games ever to be made, which is what Battlefield was supposed to be about. Without question, it's the second best World War II game ever to be made in my opinion. Best Battlefield game? Not even a question to me. Everybody else loves Bad Company 2 and the other Battlefield games more, but not me. If you didn't play this game in 2002, you must have been living in a prison in Siberia making snow angels with the Ruskies. And at lucky number 4, the Rushmore of shooter games begins. So let's start it off with another game from 2005. What a year that was for gaming. I have to put Battlefront 2 from 2005 right here. It has to make the Rushmore. It just has to. What this game allowed you to do at such an early era in console gaming was unchallengeable. I don't think any other game came close on console at that time. And the free DLC that was given to us Xbox players on Xbox One in 2019, that was beautiful. And I'm still very grateful for that. I think the DLC was exclusive to Xbox only. Some PC players made a similar mod for that, and PlayStation did not get the DLC, at least not to my knowledge. 
But yeah, this game, it's the best Battlefront game in the series, and it played the best on Xbox. The DLC made it even better. The 501st journals were chilling, epic, and a nice touch to give Star Wars fans more of an inside look on the Clone Wars. It also offered a lot of content for the other main era in the Star Wars franchise with the Rebellion. Darth Maul was unstoppable on here, and trust me, it was hard to place this game at only number 4, but if it simply wasn't for how good these next three games are, and because the PvP multiplayer was shut down relatively quickly on console, that's why it's right here at this spot at lucky number 4. Despite this game being known for its PC version, I still have to give it the nod at the number 3 position. It does have a console version and I still love playing it on there despite it being somewhat trashy on Xbox. At number 3, Counter Strike Global Offensive. It was on PS3 at one point, but it was shut down on that system a few years after it came out. But if you guys are interested in checking out this game on Xbox, Click the link in the description of this video and check that out later if you want to. We could definitely use more players on there, and there's only two possible ways to get it on Xbox One. And just so you know, it's basically the original version of CSGO. Since it was released in 2012, it has never been updated on Xbox. In 2012, it was the best game to be released in that year. It has the third best multiplayer ever, in my opinion, which is why it's listed here at this spot. It's always been fun to play. The only complaint I have from a gameplay perspective on PC would be the pistols and snipers being way too overpowered, and the P90, obviously. Everything else about this game makes it extremely addicting and fun to play, regardless if it's on PC or Xbox. And for 15 bucks, it's a steal. There isn't many games at its price point on console that gives you the amount of enjoyment that this game provides. It simply beats not playing the game at all if you don't own a PC that's meant for gaming, of course. Number 2. Call of Duty World at War. Year? 2008. World at War makes me happy. I have just as much fun on this game as I do with the number one game on this list. The nostalgia hits harder than the MP40 does. I think it had the second best campaign in the series and it damn near passes Call of Duty 4 when it comes to the story. It's real close. But it, without question, has a better multiplayer than that game. People actually run around on this game compared to that one, and it's enjoyable. It's the best World War II game ever made, and I'll be honest, if it wasn't for three things, I would have this game listed at number one. The only things I did not like on this multiplayer were the MP40, two of the perks, and the killstreaks were not the best. Other than that, and the map pack issue, this is a perfect game in my eyes. And it takes a lot for me to say that about a video game. It's also the most underrated game in the franchise. Hardly anybody plays it now, but it still puts me in a good mood just by simply playing it when I can. Even after all these years that have passed by, it's still an all-time great and forever will be. The greatest game of all time, and this goes way beyond shooter games for me is without question Modern Warfare 2. This might not be a big surprise if you have seen any of my videos. If I could go back to 2009 and stay there, I would just because of this game. I love this game so much that I plan on getting a MW2 tattoo at some point. When you talk about the best kill streaks, the best guns, the best attachments, the best maps, do I need to continue? The only bad thing about this game was the noob tubing and maybe the quick scoping, especially the quick scoping with the Barrett 50 cal, which was completely fucking stupid and ridiculous. 
Other than that, this game is nearly perfect, just like World at War. In fact, other than World at War, it's not much of a competition here for the number one spot. Nothing else comes close for me, and it's by far the best modern combat shooter game to ever be conceived by the hands of mankind. I don't think I need to say much more here with this game, because it kind of speaks for itself. We just better get the multiplayer remastered at some point, and I just hope they have video games up above, because after World War III starts in real life, I plan on playing this game for eternity up there. No joke. So there you have it. My top 25 shooter games since 1999, mainly on console. The last thing I have to throw in this video is this. As we look back at some of the greatest games ever made, every type of game, all of them, every video game ever made, several of these games are in that conversation. When you look at this time period from 1999 to 2012, 22 of the 25 games on this list were from that time period. Gaming has not been the same since then. These developers need to do a better job, as if their life depended on it, to recapture some of that magic. But the truth is, I don't think we will ever see a better collection of games made compared to the ones made in the 2000s decade or around that time frame in the new millennium. We need people to step the fuck up and put the money aside for once like how they used to and focus on making a good game before everything else. If you put more time and effort into anything, you will find that pot of gold eventually. Especially if you make something that people enjoy and that people respect. Be sure to comment what you think in the comment section below and give the video a like if you enjoyed most of these games. Like I said, you don't have to agree with everything on the list. It's my own personal taste. But anyway, a lot of time went into making this video as you could imagine. Feel free to share this video with your buddies or on social media if you want to. But for now, it's been a great time and a great ride with all these games and putting this video together. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.